welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited about today's video. It is part three of my pageant series. In case you missed part one and part two, be sure to check it out in the links via my description below. I've been super overwhelmed and blessed and excited about the response to these videos. I have never seen you guys so engaged on a topic before, especially one so controversial. I asked you guys on my community page and on my Instagram to send in your best questions and we got so many hundreds of responses. We've chosen the most upvoted and the most interesting ones that we like the best to answer today. One of the things that I really loved about doing the pageant series was getting to involve my full crew and group of friends on camera in a way you guys haven't seen before. And I noticed a lot of you guys really loved our round table discussion at the end of part two. So today with me, I'm bringing in Garrett. Garrett directed the first two episodes, so he has an amazing perspective. Also, his mom is Miss Pennsylvania in 1988, who I interviewed in part one. Hi, I'm Garrett. I am the creative director for Michelle's channel, and I directed the past couple pageant episodes. I, I mean, a lot of things. Thanks. Challenge Accepted and Culture were the two big series that I yeah. did with Michelle. So. so I'm really excited to have this conversation with you yeah. rather than just answering these questions by myself. So the first question from Instagram by that Katie girl. I did a pageant my freshman year of college for a scholarship. Ours had a talent portion and no swimsuit portion. What would you have done if there had been a talent portion at Miss Malibu. This is the thing we've joked about a ton, like what would I have mm -hmm. actually done? We actually watched Miss America 2019 on Sunday, which was super fun. Seeing those women do their talents and walk and talk so eloquently was just amazing. Some amazing pianists. Amazing like pianists singing, vocalists. dancing. Yeah, cool. So I think for my talent, I probably would have figured out singing. Um, you know what would have been cool? Choreographing a fight scene on stage. How cool! Oh that my is. god! Yeah. But with other people, you have to do it by yourself. Yeah. I thought about doing like a martial arts showcase. That'd be cool. Yeah, but I'm not like that great at it. I, I would have had to like train a ton for it. This next question also from Instagram, Tinley Ru says, "What was the environment like backstage?" at the pageant. So I wish we could have shown more of the backstage at the pageant. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to because everyone's changing backstage. I vlogged a little bit as you guys saw. So the on stage question. On stage question. But the environment backstage was actually amazing. I want to be super clear that the contestants in my pageant were phenomenal, supportive, like helping each other get dressed, zipping each other up. We had very little time to change clothes backstage and in a very small area and like people were letting other people borrow their makeup and hairbrushes. It wasn't this catty thing that I've seen on TV before in my experience. Everyone was awesome. All, like Samantha, Savannah, the women who won were amazing and supportive and awesome. I had actually had a great time backstage. Yeah, I mean, not I not sugarcoating at all. I obviously wasn't backstage, but I had, you know, Michelle had her lav on, so I could kind of hear some of the the dialogue that was going on. And honestly, the contestants I think were the best part of the entire experience. Oh yeah, like awesome. they, like what Michelle said, so supportive. That was one of the most eye opening to me because mm -hmm. again, all we see is TLC is the caddy, you know, um, toddlers and tiaras. Yeah, but we we got we we didn't see any of that. Now, no, granted, there weren't even like crazy pageant moms. Yeah, except for Olivia. Except for Olivia. Don't Thank touch you. your hair. I spent a really long time teasing it. If you touch it, it'll fall. Did you remember the Vaseline to put on your teeth? You remembered your shoes, right? Sky's the Limit 87 says, how did your total costs, hair, makeup, dresses, personal trainer, etc., compare to other people in the competition? How did it compare to other people in the top five? Just a refresher, these are all of the costs associated with the pageant I participated in. This does not include personal training because it varies from trainer to trainer. I cannot speak on how much money other contestants spent. However, in our research for the video, there were so many articles and stories and videos about people who've gone broke trying yeah. to do pageants. Some contestants said like, I've worn a $7,000 dress on stage before. So it seems to range between a couple hundred dollars and a couple thousand dollars. Right. Some people go in wearing the clothes they already own. Right. They do their own makeup, they do their own hair. There are ways to do it cheaply. When I went into this experience, I wanted the most intense experience possible. Yeah. I wanted to be fully immersed 
And so Kristen, my coach, I told her, tell me exactly what to do that gives me the best chance at winning this thing. I wanted to commit fully. So that's where I was coming from. And a lot of people in the comments I noticed saying, yes, it was expensive to do pageants, but I got a scholarship at the end and I won $20,000 right. or I won this. That's amazing and that's valid, that's that's awesome, but not everyone wins that. So for the people who didn't get the scholarships, a chance. yeah, it's 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 kind of like a it's a lottery in a way. And so that's amazing for the people that it, it did pay back that money for, but that's not everyone's experience, unfortunately. It feels like the bar to entry is pretty high. And I right. think that eliminates the ability for a lot of lower income women yeah. to participate in something like this. And that's kind of a shame. Next question, do you think that the judges were fake or dishonest when rating you just because you were documenting, as if they tried to view it as better than it actually is on camera. So obviously I can't like speak on the judge's behalf as to whether or not they were actually telling the truth or playing it up for camera. I feel like we need more women like that. I think she'd be a great Miss Malibu. My qualitative assessment was I thought they were being honest. I personally think the judges were playing it up a little bit on camera mm -hmm. in watching Miss America the other night. We realized all of the questions they were asking the contestants were to tell the audience, Miss America is relevant and pageants are relevant. I think anyone on camera, no matter what the situation is, is going to act differently and you know, try to help promote themselves if possible. So I, obviously I think there is some bias there. We have no way of knowing yeah. how the other interviews went because we, we weren't allowed to be right. there. The judges off camera to me in person after the pageant were super nice, respectful and like mm -hmm. telling me like you did so well in the interview, like you were awesome. And yeah. at that point there was no incentive for them to be that way exactly. because we were done filming the video. And I think I saw a comment that was like, because you were filming, it got you further in the contest, but they would have never let you win because it would have seemed unfair. That's something I've thought about. Right. Yeah. So did that hold you back? I think it could have hurt and helped you in, at the same right. time. I thought about that too. I was like, oh, like, wow, I got farther than I thought. Oh, I didn't win. Oh, maybe they didn't think I was serious. Mm -hmm. Or the perception like if we have you win, people are gonna think that we're biased because right. you were recording it for a documentary. So, I don't know. I love this question. Also super high upvotes on my community page. What are your thoughts on the lack of inclusion from the disabled community, both physical and mental disabilities, and traditional beauty pageants? There's also a second question, should men have a beauty pageant equivalent and why? I'm gonna answer the second question first, and that is there actually are male beauty pageants. Yep, there are plenty actually. It's just that they're not publicized, televised, yeah. nobody knows about them. I think there's Mr. United States, I think there's a couple other ones. I think what's telling is that why our culture just doesn't care about that, but they care about the women version of that. And I think that gets us back to our empowering versus sexism right. debate. Yes, there are male pageants, but nobody seems to talk about them or care about them. And that says definitely says something about our society. Yeah. The question about including more women of mental and physical abilities. So there is a pageant system called Miss Amazing for women with disabilities. My first instinct was, why can't they be grouped with everyone else? But then I also realized people are, would also think that's unfair. It's awesome that there's a pageant yeah. dedicated just to that. Yeah. I, I had no idea. My biggest qualm was, why do you have to fit this very specific standard of beauty in order to have a voice? You know, I think someone in a wheelchair talking about their personal experience overcoming that would be just as powerful, if not more powerful, than you know the I would women love that we to talk see like. That, Miss America. that is, I think, making an impact. I think Miss America and Miss USA are really worried right now about not being relevant anymore, and I think that's how you can be relevant. Let's be inclusive to everyone. Next question. Oh, this is a good question. No offense, but you looked a tiny bit fake in your walk and in some parts in the way you spoke. Is that the real Michelle? Or did you just put on a mask unconsciously to fit in? By the way, you rocked it. <laughs> the things that I spoke about in my answers, those were absolutely things that I agree with and like those are my opinions 100%. I do think 
that in my delivery and in the way I walked, it wasn't me. But that is because I was trying to kind of balance being myself with also following all the guidance from Kristen. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I wanted to go into this like getting the full experience. And there is a specific way to do a pageant walk. As you saw in part one, she showed me every detail of like, this is how your hands are supposed to be, this is how you're supposed to pose. And I was wearing five inch heels on platforms that I had never worn before in my life. And so already I was out of my comfort zone in that perspective. And so I had to like, pull it back and eventually when I got to the evening gown, I feel like that's when I was most myself. But absolutely, like every element of it, I there were parts of me that I had never explored before, like wearing an evening gown, standing in a swimsuit in front of people, like just the act of putting on heels made me not myself. I had no idea who you were when you were answering the interview questions. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think you sounded really like the stereotypical pageant girl. Lance Armstrong, Lord, <laughs> he is uh, something else. I was like, I've never seen you like that. Where did that come from and why? Okay. It's funny because it's not even like in my head. I wasn't like, I've got to be a pageant girl. In my head, I was like, I have to sound confident in every sentence I say. Mm -hmm. And when you're having a normal conversation like this, like you're, you're not going to punctuate everything you sure. say. But in a pageant, everything you say is supposed to sound super confident and like great. And I think when you watch Miss America, that's where those women are coming from more so than I have to sound like a pageant girl. It's like, it's more like, I've got to sound really smart and like think through everything I'm saying and you're under such time pressure that that is the result that comes out. Which is bizarre. I like, I your answers were great in the interview, but you just had this like ditzy pageant girl persona. You thought I was ditzy? Answering the questions? Did, we just played the clip, right? You just saw that. You, you saw the oh video. Oh God, I didn't think I looked ditzy. That question threw me. And I just knew I had to say something. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. And I, I know the questions are coming so fast and you have to think on your feet. But if, I swear, or I feel pretty strongly about it, if you were able to answer the questions with the cadence that you did when the you- The practice questions. The practice questions. Yeah. Today, social media makes self-confidence such a hard thing to achieve. You would have won. 50% of my brain during the interview was I'm wearing heels, mm. I have to keep my hand on my hip, I have to suck it in because I'm wearing a dress that's two sizes too small for right. me, and I have to like smile and look like I'm comfortable when I'm wearing clothes that are just so foreign to me is a better way than saying they're uncomfortable, but like that plus time pressure, being asked a question I never thought I was going to be asked, it definitely makes you a little crazy. That's why when you see me walk, I'm smiling, but I don't look comfortable. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have worn tennis shoes or gone barefoot, and then I would like I, I would have been fine. The answer is yes, I was putting on a little bit of a mask. Kat W from Instagram says, considering you spoke about girls not needing to be a specific size for the pageant and showing a few girls of varying physiques, what drove you to work out and get fit again pre-pageant? Was that something you felt you had to do to fit in with the top tier? Were you recommended to do so? How did it make you feel that you had to amend yourself to fit the ideal before you felt comfortable taking part in doing the swimwear competition? Do all pageant girls have to go through grueling workouts so they're accepted? This is a great question. So the short answer is that, again, I wanted to have the true pageant experience. I wanted to do exactly what the top winners do to get there. Part of it was I want to look good in a swimsuit. Who doesn't? But also, I just love working out. And I will take any excuse in any video I can to make it a workout video. I didn't feel like a pressure to change or look a certain way. I totally could have gone out looking the way I did in my before photo. But also, anyone who's been on a workout journey knows that when you're working out, you're not only just physically feeling better about yourself, but you're also like mentally more aware. You're, you feel great about life. And those were all mindsets I wanted to have stepping on stage basically naked. What I was impressed with was the body type diversity in the pageant, uh, at least the local level that we saw. That was one of my favorite parts about the pageant. None of them ended up 
getting to the top five, which was a bummer. And we've never seen anyone plus size at the national level. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty telling. I, yeah, I think, I think that's the answer to your question. Like, yes, there is pressure to work out and to get your body to a certain type because that, as of now, is the only way to get to the national level right. pageants. Sarah Starr from YouTube asks, if you were crowned Miss Malibu, would you have continued in the pageant system? Yes, I absolutely would have. I was ready to go to Miss California. I was ready to make part four, five, six for this. You guys know me, I commit and I commit fully. We figured if she won, we would just continue shooting as long as we could to see how far we could take it. I personally think even though you would have continued, I don't think you would have had time to be Miss Malibu personally. You think you would have time. I don't think Michelle would have had time to be Miss Malibu. There's a lot of social engagements and speaking opportunities. But I love that. I know, I and that. you'd be good at it, but you don't have time to do those things. But I would have made time. Even though we didn't know logistically how it would have happened, I was ready to keep yeah, it. Yeah, you were, you were ready to, yeah. to, to give it a try at least, which was... Which yeah, was and cool. I think all of that would have become part of the videos. Like, what is it actually like to be a pageant winner? Exactly. Do you think you'll ever participate in a pageant again in the future? So when I entered the pageant, Kristen said, you're gonna get the pageant bug and you're gonna wanna keep going and mm -hmm. doing it. I remember. Yeah. And <laughs> I didn't like fully think that that was gonna happen, but I actually really enjoyed this experience and I am competitive. So I was like, man, I, I, I have all the clothes now. I know how to do it. I guess I could enter another one and now I know how to fix the things that I did and I can be more myself and feel mm -hmm. more relaxed in the heels and whatever. At this point in time, I don't have any plans to do another pageant, but some people have brought up the idea of me entering a Miss America pageant Trying and training a, a talent. Mm. Isn't that scary? Interesting. And then we can compare the two systems. Yeah, then we compare the two. Interesting. I trained like Miss America for 16 days. Is that a thing we should do? Let us know. I feel closure yeah. from what we found out. I think our assessment seems to be shared with a lot of you yeah. guys in the comments. Like, I don't feel the need to do it again because right. I think I have all my answers, honestly. I, I, how do you feel? For me, in my life, I always like want to do things that push me to be better and, you know, can we make a video and share that experience with others? And I don't know if just doing another pageant would be as impactful per se right. as me taking on some of the other challenges we have lined up for this fall. If it makes sense, I, I mean, I'm down. It's not like I'm like not down to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a- uh, It's a lot of time. It takes so yeah. much time that it has to be worth right. what we're gonna get it at the end result. Right. So. But if people wanna see me do Miss America and compare the two, I'm open to considering that. The very last question from Sky Cowens on Instagram. Hi, Sky. My question is, in what specific ways do you think pageants could become less sexist and more empowering? This is a great question that I also have. I don't have a solid answer on that. I think that the changes Miss America made this year by removing the swimsuit competition and when the women came out to announce themselves mm -hmm. at the top of the program, they said their list of like accomplishments in addition to where they're from, which mm -hmm. felt really cool to me. Because again, we're dealing with a qualitative mm -hmm. judgment yeah. thing, it's really hard to say. And I think it's entirely dependent on who directs the pageant and who the judges are. Yeah. We got very lucky that our pageant, the judges were pretty liberal. Kristen mm. is an amazing director and she honestly was very encouraging of being yourself as much as mm -hmm. the system allows. What is your ideal pageant? What does it look like? What are the requirements? My ideal pageant is just people coming, doing a runway show, getting to talk about their accomplishments and there's no judging. People come and their friends come and cheer them on. Like that's it. Like it'd be so cool to do some sort of like swimsuit evening gown fashion show, talking about how badass each person is as they walk without judgment or who's winning, who's better than the other. Like that's what excites me the most. Imagine a pageant letting in all shapes and sizes, disabilities, everything. It's not about the way they, I mean, you can make them look as great as they want on stage. I think everyone just gets to go out on stage, dress the way they want to dress and then 
if, if there's a judging component, I think it's fine as long as the idea of what wins and what's thought of as attractive or beautiful could be anything. And I think yeah. that's how you remove the sexism part of it and make it empowering. Then you can go on stage in your, in your hoodie and your sneakers yeah. <laughs> and do your thing and speak really well about a topic that you're passionate about. And there's something cool about that. Yeah. That was it. Well, there were a lot more, but those are the ones we are able to cover today. This is the part of the video I'm most excited about, where I shut up and you guys get to hear from some pretty amazing women. On my Instagram and YouTube, I asked people who have participated in the pageant system to send in videos of them talking about their experiences because, you know, ours is just like one insular experience, but some people do this for years. I am really excited for you to see their perspectives now. Hi, I'm Kira Hobaika, the current Miss Valley the Sun for Miss America. I have been doing pageants for about six to seven years now, ever since I was 14. Hi, my name is Kendra Land. I am a current pageant participant and have been doing pageants for the last 10 years. Hi, my name is Kayla Vickers. I'm from Paris, Texas, and I competed in pageants for about five years. I'm Caroline Weinroth, Miss Northern Virginia 2018 with the Miss America organization. I have been competing in pageants for two years. My talent for Miss America competitions is playing electric guitar. Hello, my name is Samantha Schubert, and I am the current Miss Greater Tacoma USA 2019, competing for the title of Miss Washington USA in November. I have over 10 years of pageant experience. Hi everybody, my name is Dalia de Santiago and I became involved with pageants at the age of 17 where I not only got the opportunity to compete but to also train other contestants and to be a judge. I originally started because I really liked to sing for people. I decided in order for me to do that more, I thought pageants were a great experience. And ever since then, I like to say that I got bit by the pageant bug. Overall, my pageant experience has been incredibly positive. It's given me the opportunity to meet friends I'll have for a lifetime, speak in front of thousands of people about my passions, and change the world ultimately. The girls are so sweet, and you wouldn't expect that. Of course you're gonna have your catty girls, and of course you're gonna have the ones who are freaking out about everything that's happening within the pageant, and they don't really care about anyone else. But there are those girls who really genuinely care just about confidence, and really just wanting to learn what confidence is really about. I've learned so much from the times when I've messed up on stage or an interview maybe didn't go as well as I thought. And I've also learned from the times when I thought I had it in the bag and I still wasn't called as a runner-up. I've always had positive experiences with pageants because I like having a goal and working for it. And preparing for a pageant is really difficult. Another aspect that I enjoy about it is the networking. You have to go out and find resources to help you acquire the skills that you feel are what you need to excel in this pageant. I remember my Zumba instructor, she has a dance studio and I would watch her dancers have so much personality. I thought to myself, why can't I incorporate some of that into my walk? And that make, maybe give me a little more edge. I always meet some awesome, incredible women that share the same aspirations and dreams that I do. I've gotten thousands of dollars in scholarships and I personally have raised over $25,000 for local nonprofits and volunteered over 4,500 community service hours. And I chose to do that because pageants have really, really helped me and given me the confidence to want to go out into my communities and make a difference and change people's lives. When I first started pageants as a young 13 year old, I was incredibly nervous. I saw these women who were winning, quote unquote, and it made me self-conscious a little bit because I wasn't that person. And I felt like to win a pageant, I had to become that person and when I realized that I had to be unapologetically myself that's when not only I started doing better in pageants but I started having fun the worst experience would have to be I was bullied in school for being in pageants because no one saw me as the type of girl who would do them because I was considered a emo and punk and like scene queen and all that stuff no one really took the fact of me doing pageants as a normal thing for me. I would have people come up to me at lunch and call me names and say that I deserved to not win a pageant that I was in. I would have people tell me that I wasn't pretty enough to do pageants and that I shouldn't do them and I'm too weird and awkward to do them, but I wasn't doing the pageants for them. I was doing it to build my confidence. I've always been so self-conscious of my body. And even though I'm four foot 11, I put on those five inch heels I put on that long flowy dress and I feel like a princess. How can you hate that? 
there can be catty girls. But most of the time, like 99% of the time, you do not meet catty girls. There's like that 1% where you do. And in all honesty, you just have to keep your distance. You don't have to hang out with them. You can stay with the friends that constantly uplift you. My least favorite part about pageants is that two minutes of interview or 10 seconds on stage isn't a true representation of who you are as a person. And for judges to rank first, second, third place, I think that's a bit unfair. I would almost prefer that judges say this is what we have in mind for a representative of this particular pageant but let's see who embodies that and represents that person with her own characteristics and qualities that she brings to the table i think that would make it a bit more fair the one thing that people don't really understand and the hardest thing about pageants is that unlike any other sport or activity you don't have an exact scoring system when you play football basketball baseball you know exactly what to do to get a point and you know exactly how to win the game based on that. In pageants, it's so arbitrary. It's five judges determining who they think best represents this organization. And sometimes that's you and sometimes it's not. The least favorite thing about pageants for me has always been the quest for perfection. And that's simply unattainable, unrealistic, and I think untrue. I think the women who have the most success in pageantry are the ones who are the most vulnerable, the ones who are willing to admit when they make a mistake. Pageants aren't fake. Girls don't cut each other's dresses and fight over the tiaras because that's not true. All of my friends have been in the pageant community and really it is a community. We all rely on each other and talk to each other when we need help. The sisterhood is real. The amount of girls that you meet they are so great and fun. I have a group chat with some of my best pageant friends and we talk about anything. I have graduated with a master's degree. I have published two books. I am a cancer survivor. And I don't think I would have been able to do any of that if I didn't have that family to push me, if I didn't have something to make me better than I was yesterday. Pageants have taught me that if you set a goal for yourself and you work hard and prepare yourself, you can confidently excel in anything you do, whether that be a job interview, meeting new people. Anytime I've applied for a job, I always say that I was Miss Teen Paris because it shows that I have the compassion and the patience to do community service, be a role model for children, and be a face of the city that I was born and raised in. There's not one type of woman who competes in a pageant. What you see on a pageant stage or on a telecast for two hours is only a small representation of the years and hours of service and studying and fun that women have when they compete in a pageant. Just meet someone who's done a pageant because their experiences and their confidence and the way they shape the world will blow your mind. If you guys enjoyed this video and this series, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below with what challenge should we take on for the next multi-part series. I would love to dive deeply into something you guys might think is a little bit controversial or could use further inspection. Let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we do badass stuff. Have a great day. Bye.